wonderful flow of God. I am Pastor Justin Amaika. I believe God has been faithful and working wonders in your life. However, the video you're about to watch has the capacity to transform your life and to inspire you, to encourage you, and to profess solution to any life lingering challenges you might be going through. All you need to do is to open up your heart even as you receive the servant of God, Pastor Mike Daniel, as he ministers to you. Please kindly subscribe, click on the notification bell, like, share. And comment so that all that can be blessed. God bless you with you in Jesus' name. Let's go. Before I start teaching, I want to let you know that it is important that you marry right or you marry well. It is very, very important for you. Because according to God, it does not permit second chance of marriage. Except there's a death of a partner. Now, I know a lot of pastors abroad, big pastors who are married, but it is against the word of God. It is only one opportunity. So it's not like, oh, I don't like him again, I'm going to separate. I don't like him again, I'm going to divorce. According to God, it is unacceptable. And there's a reason you can only leave your partner, whether husband or wife, there's one reason. Infidelity. Adultery in marriage. And he said, even if you do that, you cannot remarry as long as that person is alive. So this is a one major reason why you should marry right because there is no room for divorce and there is no room for separation. That is one. Another reason why you have to, you have to marry well or marry right, your future assignment may not be achieved because at times it is just better to work alone than to have two people who are not together. Bible says, can two work together except they agree? Marriage is a journey of two persons that have to agree to achieve success. Now, when there is conflict between two and they are supposed to live together, you find out that their marriage will be a stumbling block to both of them. So it means, if you don't marry well, whatever goal that God has set for you, whatever plan that God has for you, may not be achieved because of wrong marriage. Wrong marriage can terminate somebody's life prematurely. Wrong marriage can take people to hell. And I found out that one of the reasons, devil, one of the avenues that they want to use to take a lot of persons to hell is by, by marriage. Now, divorce, separation, remarriage, and it's the shortest way, one of the ways that devil is working hard on to take a lot of persons to hell. Because I know that once somebody remarries, why their spouse is unheard, the person commits adultery. So I don't have to tell you where the, an adulterer goes. You can read that in Mark chapter 10, from 9 to 12. He said, while your spouse is alive, you remarry, he says you commit adultery. It doesn't matter what happens. You see why it is so complicated. So, you have no option, and I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus. Because you are here, you will marry well in the name of Jesus. But you have to pay attention and know what to do. Yes, you don't marry out of emotion. I want to say a lot of things. I have been serving God since 20, and... Um, God bless me with a very good look. Yes. Very good look. And intelligence. Yes, and I went to a very good school. I had beautiful girls. Uniben. Not when we are playing university. There was no FU when I was in university. I met beautiful girls. And I met rich girls that wanted to marry me. But I always remember. If you marry wrong, I will not be able to. Emotion did not guide me. No money could buy me. No beauty could buy me. I was pursuing the woman that will help me, that I will help to fulfill a great future together. So I stood my ground. Because I know I can't marry twice. Now, let us go to tonight's teaching. That's just the introduction. Now, let me give you a scripture. Luke 14, 28 to 29. It says, For which of you intended to build a tower, seated not down first, and counted the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? 29. Let's happily, after he had laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. What is Jesus trying to say? Who wants to do something substantial in this life? For example, something that is substantial is building a skyscraper, building a two-story building. It will cost you million, especially in this kind of economy now. 
Jesus is saying that will you not go and sit down first and calculate, plan, carry out estimations, know whether you can make it happen or you just rush into it. He says, when you want to do something substantial and you rush into it with that adequate plan and preparation, people will mock at you. Now, marriage is something that is very substantial, like a tower in your life. I'm not saying this to scare you. You don't have to be afraid of marriage. You just have to know what to do, to know how to choose. But marriage is not something you just do. It is substantial. It is more important than a tower. So, you have to plan, prepare, not just prepare, adequately so that people will not mock you. So that people around will not mock you. So that it will not deprive you of many things. You have to plan your marriage. You have to be prepared adequately. But I found out that people prepare to become a doctor. Prepare to become an accountant. Go to school for 20 years, 25 years, 30 years. Study and study just to uh, me, me become an engineer, to become uh, a fashionist, to become some. But except for marriage. People think that as I grow, I know what it means to be a wife or to be a husband. People are not prepared to be a good husband. And people don't prepare themselves to be good wives. And we always pray, God, give me a God-fearing man. Whereas we yourself, you are not God-fearing person. You pray to God, give me a good wife, but you are not a good husband in the making. Give me a good husband, but you yourself, when you get married to anybody, you are not going to be a good wife because you are not prepared. You didn't work on how to be a good wife. You didn't work on how to be a good husband. You want to be the tower, but you just want to rush into it. You think it's by, you know, you just know it. You prepare for it. Nobody passes jam. I'm not going to without preparing for jam. Nobody passes your egg. If you don't prepare adequately, you're going to a miracle center. And at the end of the day, we will know that you are not smart. We will know it will show that you are not smart. It will show that you are not the one who did the work. It will show in your life. Are you still here with me tonight? Prepare. You have to pay attention. To prepare. Those of you who are not married yet, prepare yourself to get married. One of the ways I prepare myself from where I come from, anger is a major problem. Yes. And they need to beat their wives once in a while. That's where I, I, I come from. Before you know, your hand will just land on your wife's cheek. Before you realize, just like that, brother, I hear. You, the hand is like remote that has to control you. Just, bah, hey, you just slap. And uh, everybody in our family used to have hot blood, including the ladies. So God now blessed me and gave me a younger sister, a lady with hot blood. And talk to me anyhow. But I, made, I said, I don't want to beat my wife when I get. I made that decision a long time ago, so I began to use that to practice. She would talk to me. Oh. So if I beat her, I'll beat my wife. I never laid my finger on her. But I think I'm almost 80 years in marriage. I've never touched my wife once. You know what? Clap for Jesus. I give all the glory to Jesus. Not once. You will understand why I say I didn't touch my wife when you get married. Because I know that marriage is a union that causes a lot of provocation. Your husband provokes you. Your wife provokes you. It is marriage. Every marriage, you don't let anybody lie to you. Don't let anybody lie to you. You see any minister stands on the altar and tell you that my marriage is heaven on earth. Well, thank God my marriage, I live in Otoe, care for it. Nobody has, nobody will tell you I have a bad, bad marriage, everybody will know. I live in Otoe. I've been living here for years. I live inside the people of Otoe. I say if I have a bad marriage, you will know they will be like, you'll have had. It won't hide. So, I'm not preaching, telling you because I'm a pastor, because my marriage is working by the grace of God. It is working. My marriage is working by the grace of God. So, it's not somebody who comes online using marriage to eat, to survive, whereas the battle at home. No. No. I'll tell you practical things by the word of God that will help you to, to choose well and enjoy your marriage in spite of the differences. Between two spouses and all of that. 
So let me quickly go to some points I want to discuss tonight. Some issues to iron out for you to marry well. When you don't prepare yourself and get into marriage, you are going to have a lot of crisis. And uh, since you cannot remarry, you have to stay and just work on yourself in it. But it won't be easy. But it is better to hang on at some issues before you go into marriage. So that you can know who to marry, who not to marry. You know yourself. You know the kind of person. I knew myself. I knew my temperament. Even though I was a child of God. I knew somebody who cannot stay with me. I knew somebody who cannot. Because I know myself. Some person may want to envy my I don't envy my wife. I'm not somebody that is easy to stay with. Yes. And that's the same for everybody. That's why you have to know the kind of person that can stay with you. I knew. I wasn't asking people out. I passed on one of the most beautiful, that has beautiful plenty ladies if I chose my wife. But not from the church. And I never asked anybody out once. I could see, this one cannot, this one cannot, this one cannot carry body. This one cannot, this one cannot, no, no, no. I didn't, I, I didn't walk up to them. You have to know. It is when you are started preparing, you know your weaknesses. You know your strengths. You know who you are. You know where you are going. Then you'll be able to know the kind of person that should pair with you. Number one issue to iron out in your life, whether you are a brother or you are a sister. Number one is self-preparation for marriage. You have to prepare yourself. Self-preparation. Self-preparation. Prepare yourself, self. A lady, you want to be a good wife, you don't know how to cook. You say, well, the age has changed, there are technologies, your husband should be cooking for you. You say, well, you, are, you come from a rich home, your husband should be the one cooking for you. See, this is one of the reasons we have a lot of uh, marriages breaking today, because wives can't cook for their husband. Come on, let me tell you something. A lady can't be cooking for me, and I will not love her. Even as a pastor, that's why I won't allow you to cook in the first place. No lady ever, all my years of being a single pastor, if I got no lady ever cooked for me. Because if you cook for me, I will like you. Yes. If you start cooking for me, and your food is sweet. Who don't like food here? Say, Pastor, don't like food. Who told you I don't like food? I love the Lord. I'm not telling ladies a, very, a huge secret. You can't be cooking well for your husband at the right time. Except that man <laughs> is not of God. He will love you. Go and learn how to cook, ladies. That doesn't mean that brothers don't know how to cook too. Which means, before I got married, I was cooking. But it's not like you get married. Me, me, I've been the one cooking. You, Mr. Ma, go and cook. And brothers, work on yourself to be a good husband. Work on yourself. How to address your wife. How to be a man. How to address your lady when you get married. How to respect the opposite sex. You have to respect your wife. You have to learn how to do all of these things. So let me, let me begin to talk about that. Now, working on yourself. Let me begin to measure on some issues. One area you have to look at in yourself is the area of character. 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 Some of you, you are a person of anger. Uncontrollable anger. When the spirit of anger comes, see, we, we get angry when somebody offends us. Nobody just gets angry like that. You have a right to be angry. But you must learn how to respond in such a way that I don't destroy your relationship with others. The reason some persons do not marry at the age of 30, 35, 38, 40, 45 is character problem. And one of the major problems there is anger. Anger drives people. People run, but people cannot control their anger. Imagine the man gets you angry. Before you know, you slap him. Even if he wants to continue, people would be telling him, how can you marry that kind of person? Work on your anger. Another major problem, character you have to deal with. Learn to be offended 
and be calm. And at times you don't respond. Why well, you know that? Most of the times when we respond while we are hungry, we don't respond well. When I was going to the university, my father called me and said, Daniel, I looked at you. The only problem you need to deal with is anger. And I know that it's on my blood. So I'm giving you one lesson. So as you're going, when somebody offends you, don't talk. Just keep quiet. And it helped me a lot. So even in marriage at times, my wife got to know that. When I'm very hungry, I just sit quietly. I will not talk. So, and I told her later, please, don't even say sorry to me. Don't even talk. Don't leave me for like 5, 30 minutes. I just forget I'm normal. So when we get the issues, maybe heat up, I just go to another place and sit quietly. She won't come again. For the first year, she didn't get the more she was coming, I would get angry and there will be quarrel. Later, she got to know. So just leave me alone. Don't just leave me like that. So she just leave me like 15, 20. It is me that I smile back into the place where she is. I say, hey, we'll start talking about that thing. It has ended. It has ended. Most of all, when we react, why we are hungry, we destroy things. You don't have to express how you, you, are, you are hurting. You don't have to. You see, anybody that offends you always know. When you offend somebody, don't you know? Why they will respect it? Because how you, res how you respond to their heroes. And they will love you. Ah, even the way I spoke to her, she didn't respond. Ah, she must be a very good person. He must be a very good person. They begin to attract people to yourself. Work on your character. Another issue is pride. Pride is in everybody. Uh, some people say they are marriage experts. And they are wrongly counseling people that men have ego. They don't call it pride. They said it is a wrong. I, I don't know where who taught them. Ego is pride. Ego is pride. And everybody, not just men. The reasons many women cannot submit again, we are claiming 50-50 marriage now because of pride. You can work for a bank as a lady with a first class honors. And your bank manager is 23 years old and you are 28 years old, first class. And your bank manager finishes second class lower, but is the bank manager. When you get to the office, five minutes past eight, and he says, Gladys, are you crazy? Why do you come late to the office? What will you say? Huh? Can, can I hear that again? <laughs> Sorry, what? But it's, you are older than him. But you have first class. He has second class lower. Will you still say, I'm sorry, sir? Why? Is the, there's a boss in marriage. Ladies, according to God's system of marriage, if you want to get married, you have to prepare yourself. In marriage, it's not 50-50. There is a boss. The boss is the husband. Jesus said, the man is the head of who? So when your husband, the Bible says, Sarah obeyed her husband in all things and called Abraham, what? My Lord. But this generation says it is 50. Why? Pride. 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 If you want your marriage to work, sisters, keep pride. And husbands to be brother. Because you are the boss. Because marriage relationship is not a master and servant relationship. It's a relationship between two lovers. Is different actually. Which means, even though you are the head, you are to treat the other person with love. That's the Bible says, wife, submit yourself to your husband. Husband, love. If I love my wife, I will not subject her to ridicule. If I love my wife, I will not smash her and hit her, no matter what happens. If I, no matter what happens, it's love. Let's work on our character. As you walk on yourself. Is somebody hearing me tonight? Is somebody getting anything tonight? <laughs> Marriages where husband and wife don't talk for a week. They are in the same room. Malice. Unforgiveness. You have to learn how to forgive people who hurt you. Because in marriage, you will offend everybody every day. Each other. Every day. As a pastor, at times, it is on the altar. Why myself and my wife are seated that we offend each other. 
it, the offense is just part of marriage. Now, small argument of two minutes before I go to the other. <laughs> it's part of marriage. But when your own is, everybody is still frowning. Everybody is still talking about it. Let this cause what happened today. Let this cause what happened today. Every time you are, you take it too, too, too serious. Everything is too serious. No. But let's work on character. Work on how to forgive easily. Work on how to overlook things. Work on how to tolerate. You see, there's no perfect person you're going to get married to. No matter, even Jesus comes out and appears to you and says, marry sister A, she's not going to be perfect. She may not want to cook. But she, she has what it takes to make your life better. So you have to be patient, teaching her, praying together, learning together, and that lady becomes what God wants her to become. Are you hearing me now? So nobody's going to be but you have to work on yourself. Everybody, work on your character. Learn how to forgive easily. Learn, work on your anger. Work on how, how not, how to, to resolve conflict so easily. Learn how to say I'm sorry, whether you're a man, there's nothing like her, because men don't know how to say I'm sorry. I don't believe it, all those are useless teachings. They are not godly teachings. Anybody should be humble enough to learn how to say, I am sorry. Because marriage doesn't, it's, you can't say because I'm a man. I don't say, you know, men don't say I'm sorry. They will show, that man, you are just a baby. I'm coming somewhere. Everybody should learn how to say, I am what? Can you say, hear you say, I am sorry? Good. Learn how to say it. And sincerely, don't attach excuse. Oh, I, I didn't mean to get you hurt. I'm so sorry by my action. Please forgive me. The person will receive it. For me, for example, you, know, you offend me as a pastor and I tell you and you say you're sorry and give me excuses, I will note that issue. I will put an eye on you. I'll put an eye on you. But when I see that the person sincerely, I'll put an eye on this one, it's going to be a problem. But when you sincerely do it, immediately, you're free completely. And as I do too, learn how to apologize without excuses. Learn it now. If you want to have good marriage, learn it, learn it, learn it. For example, but uh, Victor just stands up and says, Sir, you hurt me now. I say, how? Me? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What did I do just now while I'm preaching? He said, why you spoke? Uh, something boomed out of the speaker and hit his chest. But it was me who was talking. What am I supposed to, to do? I am... Um, that, that it works. Sincerely. As long as it says that you are the one who hurt them. Work on your character. Let's look at all that you work on before I, I, I run away from that. Number two. Work on hearts of communication. <laughs> you want to get married, you don't know how to talk. You say, I'm an introvert. I'm sorry for you. You will be in the room one hour. You have a roommate, you will not talk. Are you a ghost? <laughs> Learn how to, to talk. It means, I don't know, maybe something must be wrong. Maybe you don't read. Learn how to talk. Learn how to be alive. Learn how to be a good conversationalist. How to converse. Learn it. Learn how to be interesting. Learn how to be an interesting person to be with because marriage at the end of it all is it going to be you and your husband? It's going to be you and your wife. Are you going to be at home? You say, uh, honey, yes. <laughs> Do you like what I prepare? Yes. <laughs> when are we going to church tomorrow? Is this the 8 a.m.? Yes. Do you like the food? Yes. That old man is in trouble. The marriage will not be fun. It will not be sweet. What will two of you be doing at home? Learn how to be interested. Communicate. Learn how to communicate. How to express yourself. Learn it. It's not about knowing how to speak English. You may know how to speak good English, but don't know how to communicate. You're speaking grammar. People are clapping for you, but don't know what you are saying. <laughs> yeah, that's why my mother said, don't speak grammar. Yeah, you begin to speak vocabulary, people are clapping for you, but nobody knows what they are saying. Hallelujah. 
Just communicate. Learn how to communicate and there will be peace. Somebody wants sentence, the, the marriage is scattered. Proverbs 13 verse 1. Soft answer, turn it away. Rot. Learn how to communicate without causing problem. Learn how to express yourself without trouble. Colossians 4, 6, 4 verse 6. Colossians on oh, your very well. Before you choose well, is grow into maturity. Rather than remaining a baby. When I first got married, I used to call my wife baby. But uh, years back, before that time, I was in the Bible college. God spoke to me in a vision. And he said, I gave you a treasure. Because when I went to Bible college, my wife has been there. I didn't know that she was my wife. I was so, so blinded and insensitive. So I was in Bible college. I was praying, Father, give me a wife. So God spoke to me. He said, I gave you a treasure. So after, I, I, when we got married, I was prophesying that she would be a baby. So she would just be behaving babyish. 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 I advise myself. So I didn't want my wife to continue like a baby or a treasure. So I swapped from calling her a baby into treasure. Yes. Yes. That's why I call her. I, I don't want a baby as a wife. You will understand why I said, but those of you who call your wife's baby, no problem. If you like the way she babies you, she's pregnant, and she behaves like a baby. My wife didn't behave like that. No room for baby a baby with me. I don't have that time. Yeah, I see some of them online. Say, yeah, I'm pregnant. Yeah, I become a donkey. <laughs> a baby. She be your wife, I call her a baby. Yeah, continue to be a baby. Yes, continue to be a baby. Me, I don't have the strength to be nursing a baby, a grown-up baby. I don't have the strength. Praise God. Is somebody hearing me tonight? We should grow up to be matured followers of Christ instead of remaining babes. Babes. Many Christians today go to church, spend many years in church, and remain as babes. They don't grow. You see, marry that works is between two matured Christians. You see, all the celebrities, if you look at them, some of them are the ones dictating the tone of marriage to you nowadays. They are the ones showing you on Nollywood how you respond when somebody tells you that they love you. Immediately you jump at them, you give them a kiss, you open the bedroom, you go there and begin to fornicate. That is how to, to say yes. That's what Nollywood is teaching you now. Jump on the bed, kiss yourself, and have premarital sex. <laughs> you can look at their marriages. It always fails. The marriages that work are the marriages based on the principles of the Bible. Marriages that it is not fake, that people enjoy. I'm not saying, but Christians may have marriages that are not working when they don't obey these principles. That you are a Christian does not mean that your marriage works automatically. As long as you cannot obey the principles, it won't work. It is when you obey the principles that it works for you. That's the only way it works for you. So we have to grow up. Symptoms of a baby preparing for marriage, I'll mention some of them, some of them to you. Now, you know, one of the things that a baby does is that a baby always cries. Am I telling the truth? How many of us have babies at all who don't cry? If babies don't cry, something, in fact, when they give it to a child, a baby, and doesn't cry, they will beat the baby. A newborn baby, when, when the, the baby comes out and the baby is not crying, they will, the doctors will tap the baby in such a way that it will hurt the baby so that the baby can cry. There's nothing wrong for a baby to. You can imagine me, I come to church and I begin to cry. <laughs> I say, Pastor, what happened? He say, you know, ah, what they did hurt me. Ah, and, I, and I weep weeping. You know that I know something's wrong with me. There are people who want to get married that are baby, that are always crying. What does that mean? They complain over everything. They don't overlook everything. They, they complain. They cry. 
they cry, they criticize. They always, they are always complaining. They say they are Mr. Perfectionist, Mrs. Uh, uh, Perfectionist, Miss Perfectionist. They are just crying every time. They complain, they grumble. They are babies. Baby cries. Baby cries because baby cannot communicate. Baby that wants to urinate, say, Mommy, I want to urinate. Baby will begin to cry because he wants to urinate. This is the problem. Instead of it to communicate, you don't know how to communicate. You just begin to frown. You just begin to. There are people, it, it, a lot of marriages are crashing today because of baby, baby wife, baby husband. Baby husband with diapers, but grown. Baby wives, always complaining. Always, another thing, a baby, a baby is not ashamed to defecate any time and at any way. Is that correct? Even if for, the child is from U.S., the child can poo anyway. Am I telling the truth? Will you tell the parent I want to poo? Meaning, baby spouses can always disgrace other persons, family members, their husbands. They cannot be patient and look for the appropriate time to iron out issues. That's a baby. A baby is selfish. A baby is not selfish. Just let the baby to be looking at phone. Baby does not sweep the floor. Baby does not contribute to anything in the house. Uh, have you seen a baby that sweeps before? Have you seen a baby that wash plates? It's just give me, give me, and cry. Give me, give me food. Give me, give me water. Give me, give me, give me your attention. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. That is how some of us are, and we want to get married. We are not selfless. It's all about me. Who can you marry? Ah, a guy that is ready me, the guy that, you know, I can marry a man who is striking, you know. <laughs> you know, you have to have at least maybe bands and, uh, you know. I have to, you know, he has to be cute. He has to have some level of big chest. You know, he has to be presentable. He has to have some, uh, you know, degrees. This part, yes, he was have all of these things. Thank you. Are, are you here with me tonight? Babies are irresponsible. Don't go into marriage where you'll be irresponsible. You, don't, you are not responsible. Don't go marry somebody you don't have something to, put, to bring to the table. Work on yourself to bring something to the table. A baby does not pray. Have you seen babies that pray? You don't, don't pray except you just force them once in a while it comes to their mind. Once they come to church once in a month. Or you want to marry? You are still a baby. A baby that don't know how to fast. You want to fast? You want to ask a baby to fast? No. It's a baby. A baby cannot carry Bible and say, "I want to read Bible today." No. Except you force them. So that some of you are still forcing you to read the Bible. You are still a baby. Grow up. Marriage is for mature. You want to marry well. You yourself work on yourself. And as you are, well, these are the things you look out for in the person you want to get married to. Is he a baby or a matured person? Can this one forgive conflict? Can this one resolve conflict? Is this somebody that just offended and it will take one, one month before you can resolve the issues? Is this somebody that you get married to? Anything that happens, you, you are carried phone, is calling everybody. What is happening in the husband house? Everybody knows about it. All your friends know, know about it. You are a baby. Another issue to hire on out, faithfulness before you get to my know how to be learn to be faithful. Faithfulness must be practiced towards man and God, especially when it has to do with your body. Faithfulness. Bible says you are not of yourselves, that you have been purchased with a price, your body. Now, in our society today, Christians. We don't value our bodies anymore. We don't value because I look at Facebook and uh, I get discouraged with what I see. Even among Christians, we are not faithful to God, faithful to ourselves. 
Somebody who is not faithful to God will not be faithful to a husband. You will not be. Now that you are single, you are sleeping around. When you get married, maybe your husband travels for a month. Maybe four other persons will have slept with you. I looked at that one before I got married. I am going to be a pastor. What if I'm fasting? What if I travel and God begin to make me a big pastor? Will I marry somebody that before I come back, your wife is pregnant? Say God forbid. Learn to be faithful now. Brother, that's why you are you see, you lie to them. You have that line. God showed you to me in my dream and all of that. I've been monitoring you. You are good. You are nice. You are all that I want in the woman. You won't speak Bible verses. All you are looking for is how to sleep with the sister. And after I sleep with the sister, you move on. That's what you are moving about. <laughs> be, tell somebody to be faithful. Marriage requires partners who understand faithfulness. We have to be faithful to each other. Faithful. Loyal to each other. No matter what happens. One of these my wife knows is I cannot disrespect her. We can quarrel. But if you maybe mistakenly know that I quarrel my wife, I think that you can go and mess up with her. When I, uh, you see me, you'll be afraid. Yes, I don't joke with that. My family don't joke with my wife. You can't speak ill of my wife. To, you, they, they, they respect her because that's how I carry her. They respect her. Yes. My mother respects her. When they call her, they talk to her with respect. My elderly ones, everybody respects her. Nobody talks to her as if she is not the wife of her younger brother or this. No, they respect her. Because that's how I carry her. Yes. You don't talk to her anyhow. You will incur my wrath. You will incur my wrath. Faithful to each other. Faithful to each other. What can destroy my relationship with somebody within a split second? Mess up with my wife a little. I'll mess up with you in a big way. It will not be small. The relationship is terminated instantly. Yes, it is that serious. Somebody who married me when I was talking about, even if I was a lady, I would not marry myself. You take our joke with that kind of person, walk with a bank in a city, only for me to go and tell her, I said, God said, I'm going to be a world star pastor. Nothing was, no cobble. No nothing. I said, but God said, there's no country of the world I will not preach. But I promise you, if you marry me, I'll take you with me. That was just my line. Yes. Yes. And he said, she went to pray. God spoke to her. We'll get to that point. She, she heard from God. Because there's no way she would have agreed. And I didn't like, I didn't mess around. And she might be not think that I cannot joke with that kind of uh, even devil. The devil now will kill him. Praise God. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. Okay? Be faithful. Learn to be faithful in poverty. Yes. Yes. Am I saying what is wrong? Do you want to hear the truth? I'm not saying that what you are looking for to marry for is poverty. My wife saw my vision. I told my wife, when I wanted to marry, I was working with my former church. I was a pastor there. I said, when you go there, I pastor the largest church. I said, I'm a fine pastor. I, I am good at what I do. Yes. I said, go and check. She came and saw crack. She was afraid. She said, I don't think I'm married. You saw girls everywhere. She was afraid in her car. I said, you just see, you have not seen anything. God said in the future. But can you marry me? In poverty. Okay. Learn to be faithful in keeping your partner's secrets. 
Learn to be faithful to God. Learn to be faithful to man. Just be faithful. Next one. There must be an agreement of vision and finance. Let there be a level of agreement. What are we going to be doing? You must be doing a job. You two must agree on what to do to move the family forward so that in your marriage you'll not be begging and hoeing people around. I never did that with my wife. We always had enough for ourselves, plan ourselves. You won't go to the neighborhood and say, we collected hoy, we didn't pay, collected matches from the neighbor. It never happened. Plan myself. Making sure that I'm not begging in the neighborhood. Making sure my wife is not borrowing from anybody in the neighborhood. With what we plan, I plan myself. Plan everything. And we're growing, pushing. You don't have steady flow of income. Work on it quickly so that I can get married. Next one. Pray to God so that I can identify your marital spouse. God will help you to identify your marital spouse in Jesus' name. It is not about somebody is nice to you now. You don't know the intention of that person. God knows the intention of everybody. God knows at times you can. I study human behavior as an undergraduate. And we are told that one of the most difficult things to study in life is to study the behavior of a man. It is deceptive. It is manipulative. Most of the time when you think you know somebody, in another one week or two months, everything you know will just change. You say, ah, oh, his best food is, is, is bread and uh, uh, beans. This month. Next month, it may be jollof rice. When I married my wife, my best meal was pande yam and egusi soup. It's not the same today. Tomorrow, it will not be the same. It will change. It might be behavior, but that is why you must know how to hear from God. When I ask my wife out, I ask her to pray. That's how I follow discouraging people. Don't let somebody know that they are sharing for you. Say yes, say yes, say yes. Because he came with a jeep, he brought a golden ring, and he said, say yes, say yes, say yes, say yes. Yeah. That is not how a Christian sister and brother should come together for marriage. It is against the principle of the Bible. When you see, see somebody you want to get married to, talk to her in the private so that the person can go and pray. And know, go and hear from God. My wife went to pray. We were like three. So all of them had money. Only me that didn't have money. That time. At all. Nothing at all. So when she prayed, <laughs> God told her that all of them, when you marry them, there's going to be a problem you will have in that marriage. When you get married, you will have a problem. But all of them will divorce you. But the only one that will stand by you is this pastor. So when she came, she said, I'm married. I said, why? He said, God said that we have a problem that you are the only one that stands. I said, what is the problem? <laughs> he said, I don't know. <laughs> and we had problem. We did have. But God overcame for us. You see why you have to hear from God? You have to hear from God. You cannot just look at somebody's posture, stature, and just decide. You must hear from God. God will talk to you. Talk to your prayer partner. Pray. What is my future? Holy Spirit. I was dating a lady when I was pastoring several years back. And I stood up one night. As beautiful. Nothing was wrong with her. Beautiful. Beautiful. She was in Uniland almost finishing. So I was thinking, am I going to marry her now? She's about to finish. Lord. I, so I stood up in the middle and said, Lord, show me my future with her. Show me. Show me, I prayed, I prayed. Show me my future with her. As I went to bed, God opened my eyes in the revelation. In ten, 10 years to our marriage, she began to sleep with men. I saw it. Holy Spirit speaks. And that was why I broke out for that relationship. I just said, Holy Spirit, break me out. And it was that I stopped picking my calls. Yes. I said, Father, don't make her pick my call again. If you are the one showing me this vision, I know the brave person has, so that way I will get my hand because of me. The Lord Jesus, don't let her, don't let her dislike me. I will call. You won't pick. I will call. She won't pick. I will call. 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 Hey, Holy Ghost, thank you. I am free. <laughs> Ten years into marriage. Enroll for counseling. Before that time, when you see somebody you want to get married to, please quickly inform your pastor. Inform quickly so that. They'll teach you, tell you what to do. Don't hide it. Don't just come and tell me that I want to get married two weeks time. I may not do anything about it. I may not listen to you. Just, just go ahead and do whatever you like. You want to get married the moment, at least once you agree with each other. 
get to the church. Church will, will begin to guide you on how to go about it. Then counseling. A lot of people get married today without counseling. A lot of marriages are breaking. When you find out most of marriages are breaking, there is no adequate counseling. People are getting married, they don't know anything about marriage. No counseling. Take care of your spiritual liabilities before you get married. Everybody has. Some of you, what is tying you down from getting married? I'll pray, getting married, I'll pray you'll be free tonight. Can I hear a big amen? amen? Take care of your spiritual liabilities. I've seen a family, ladies, when they get married, whoever they get married to, after, if the person is doing well financially, the person will become broke. And after a while, they become, they will lose their job. I know one, I studied it. I found out, ah, this is the problem. They become broke. Later, the man becomes sickly. Later, the man dies. Their family is like that. If you look, if you look, let me see it. So there are some marriages, it's a spiritual liability that has to be taken care of. There are some marriages, when they get married, at least for like Abraham, they will be barren for like at least 20 years. It happened to Isaac. <laughs> it happened to Jacob. Am I telling the truth? Yes, they're all barren before they have to fight it. There are some family, there will be a delay before they get married. There are some families, you know, a, a lady was crying to me one time and they said, Pastor, pray for me. Everybody that comes, they just leave it. They just go. So I gave her a prayer. We did the picture. I prayed for her. She slept and she had the revelation. She was in the midst of some women. I assumed that they are witches. And she said, she now saw a smelling clothes on her body. That's why men used to run. Something used to make men to run away from her. Filthy clothes. You have to know what is wrong from where you are coming from. Some homes where you are coming from, you see that your father, your mother, the divorce is. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, ma. If you don't take care of it, it may rise against you in your marriage. It's a spiritual liability. Some marriages, some family, their husbands must go out and commit extramarital affairs and have a child outside. Even if the man is a pastor, so ma, you mind that man. That devil will manipulate him. Lift up those beautiful ways to God and give God praise this morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, I never see this guy God before. Hey, I, uh, the good, good things and the marvelous things he has done. Oh.